you know, first of all, I want to uh, thank Peter and, and Ellen and Deborah and the entire Catalyst organization and team. John was right. Um, they certainly did a very thorough review. Um, it's also a real honor to be here with John. Um, he's been, he's a colleague and I've learned an awful lot from him over the years. Um, and I know I'll continue to learn more from him in the future. And we're very honored to share this recognition with Chevron. But I especially want to thank and recognize all of the p and across the years that have helped make our company a more diverse and inclusive one. Our directors, our leadership and managers, and every single p and employee in over 100 countries around the world, they're the ones that um, really make the progress for us. Now, as you heard in the video, we're in the business of improving everyday lives of consumers we serve with very basic household and personal care products. We're at our best when we put the consumer at the center of what we do. In our industry, most of our brands and product lines are in fact purchased and used by women. In fact, even on the 15% of our sales that is uh, used by men, women either make the purchase or heavily influence the purchase. <laughs> so if we're going to have half a chance of understanding the articulated and unarticulated needs and wants of women around the world, we are going to have to mirror that diversity and inclusion of the consumers we serve. Being diverse and inclusive helps us uncover consumer insights and discover brand and product opportunities. Consumer insights may lead to the creation of a new brand or a product improvement or an entirely new product innovation, a better way to do, to do an everyday consumer job that simply needs to be done. The more diverse and inclusive we are, the more likely we are to understand consumers' needs and find ways to innovate to meet those needs. Today, as you saw, we have our most diverse workforce by any measure in history. Pretty good progress. But what really matters is how much we're improving and how much of our full potential we are realizing and we still have a long way to go. We're always looking for ways to unlock and unleash more human potential, and there are three powerful concepts we are beginning to get experience with. The first is cognitive science. Cognitive science helps us understand how the human brain works, how it really works, how individuals develop ideas and make decisions. We're learning that most of us humans respond to what is accessible and familiar and our thinking relies on perceptions of past experiences. These natural human tendencies can get in the way of an open, connected, collaborative, and inclusive culture. The second concept we're working with is intentional inclusion. It's a pretty straightforward one, and I find myself thinking about it more of the time. We're learning it's important to confront our own conscious and unconscious biases. Once we recognize and begin to understand our own personal biases, we can then approach inclusion, leadership, team building, and ultimately business building in a more intentional and deliberate manner. The last one we're experimenting with is design thinking. Now the beauty of design and integrative thinking is that you suspend judgment and search for possibilities a range of solutions to problems, a number of different ways to explore potential opportunities. Design thinking incorporates creative inspiration, modeling and visualization, and a diverse group of people to apply creative and critical thinking to solve complex business opportunities and problems. Because most of our educational training we're more comfortable using deductive or inductive thinking. When we're learning, in more and more instances, a problem would be better solved, an opportunity better seized with abductive or design thinking. If we continue to explore the potential offered by cognitive science, intentional inclusion, and design thinking, then I believe there's a lot more diversity and inclusion, progress and potential that can be unleashed in our organization. 
P&G's diversity and inclusion strategy, as you heard, everyone valued, everyone included, everyone performing at their peak. And when we run that strategy well, we apply the best business practices, more innovative business practices to the challenge of unleashing human potential in every individual, in every work team, across a worldwide organization. We serve consumers better, our brands and products improve more lives, we create growth and value for consumers, customers and suppliers, and for share owners. 15% of our share owners are employees and retirees. So it all works quite well. I cannot thank you enough for honoring our company tonight. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thanks again.